hey, 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 can we acknowledge ourselves for being here? Is that the most enthusiasm you can get from yourself? That's right, this is for you. It's so good to see everybody here today. Good to see you too. You're such a blessing in my life. All I want you to remember if you're here for the first time. Anybody here for the first time? Okay, got some. Got a few versions to my class. Well, this is a class that's not serious. So if you're looking for a serious class, you're in the wrong place. This is a sincere class, but it's not about being serious. I heard, according to the Course in Miracles, that love is joy, love is happiness. So I'd be so glad for us to experience love with each other today. That's some joy and happiness with each other today. The Course in Miracles also says that the only thing that's missing in any situation is what you are not giving. So if there's no joy in this situation, it's because you're not giving any. If there's no friendliness in this situation, Ask yourself, are you the one sitting back waiting for everybody to come up and say something to you? If you want to connect with people, are you extending to anyone? The only thing that can be missing in any situation is what you are not given. And the only guidelines to the Course in Miracles are You need not believe the ideas. You need not believe the ideas. You need not believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. Some of the ideas you may find hard to believe. You need not accept the ideas at all. You need not welcome the ideas at all. I want four or five designated friendly faces. Let me see. <laughs> Y'all like <laughs> When the hell is the Christmas cheer? Where's the Christmas cheer in here? Like, <laughs> Most of you I know. That's what's really frightening. <laughs> I am you. I am you. We are one. Remember, that's the rumor. Okay. <laughs> Some of the ideas you may actively resist, you may go, hell no. Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe. Some of them will be startling from A Course in Miracles. You're not asked to judge the ideas at all. It's their use that will give the ideas meaning to you. It's using it that will show you that it works. It's in using it that you will see that it works. So every class, just to get myself in the mood, I do some of the workbook lessons. And just say the workbook lessons, one after another, for a couple of minutes to kind of get the energy going. Is that cool? Yes. OK. <laughs> I want 
your love. I want your love.
Truth of the Course in Miracles. If you got the book, it's on page 298 in the text. The book. If you're here for the first time, I want you to know that it's no accident that we're ever anywhere. So there's a possibility that something might be said that might be something you need to hear. If the, if, or at the very least, there's a lot of cute people you can check out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Anybody in here with juice and lips? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people raise their hands here. Okay. I don't mean you can necessarily have them, but they got it. <laughs> As at the very least. If you're in a situation, of course, a miracle says, uh, when your peace is threatened, when your peace is disturbed in any way, when your peace is threatened, when your peace is disturbed in any way, say to yourself, I don't know what anything, I don't know what anything, including this, means. So if you're in a situation where your peace is threatened, I don't want you too comfortable. I don't know what anything, including this, means. If you're in a situation where your peace is threatened, if you're in a situation where you're upset, your peace is threatened, the first thing the Course in Miracles should, says you should say to yourself is, I don't understand what anything means, including this. And so I don't know how to respond to it. If I don't know what it means, then I don't know how to respond to it. If I don't know what it means, then I don't know how to respond to it. The reason why people respond to things the way they respond to things even if it's a response that's not peaceful and loving, is they think they know what the situation means. And because they think they know what it means, then they respond to it, but the response to it is based on their own judgments and their own past experiences and their own meanings and their own interpretations, which may not really be what's going on at all. How many times in your life have you responded to a situation and found out later the facts were totally different than the response that you just gave? But you responded as if your response was accurate based on what you were telling yourself. So the truth is, if a situation comes up and your peace is threatened, in order to give yourself an opportunity to come from a higher level of consciousness, then you would tell yourself, I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. I don't know what anything means, including this. And since I don't know what it means, I don't know how to respond to it. He says, that means I don't know how to respond to it. And so since you don't know how to respond to it, it says next, he says, then you say, and I will not use my own past learning as the light to guide me now. Mm. I'm not going to use my own past learning as the truth to guide me now. Why? Because I don't know what this means. So I don't know how to respond to it. And so I'm not going to use what I've learned in the past as the light or truth to guide me now. Now, what's the advantage of doing that? The advantage of doing that is that you refusing to teach yourself what you don't know. Mm. And it says, if you're refusing to teach yourself what you don't know, then the guide whom God has given you will speak to you. So your inner guide will speak to you and guide you at the point that you admit you don't know what's going on. So if you go into a situation and you think you already know, you are effectively cutting off your guidance about how to truly deal with the situation. So that means that your higher self will take its rightful place in your awareness when you offer your awareness to your higher self. So my greater self, my God self, will only take its place in my awareness when I offer it to my higher self. How do I know I'm truly offering it to my higher self? If I was to say when I'm threatened what? I do not know what anything, including this, means. And so I don't know how to respond to it. And so I won't use my own past learning as the light to guide me. Now, you could also do it with the person. I do not understand what you mean. And so I do not know how to respond to it. And I'm not going to use my own past learning as the light to guide me now. I don't know what you mean. 
and so I don't know how to respond to it, and so I won't use my own past learning and past experiences as the light to guide me now. And if you do that, that allows your inner teacher, which we all have, our inner, inner guide, which we all have, our true spiritual self, our true greater self, the universe within us, God within us, spirit within us, is really there. But what happens is we don't achieve the correct attitude and perception that allows us to allow that part of us to take over in our experience. Many people say that, that they doubt if there's a higher power or, or where is God in a world like this or where is spirit in a world like this. <clears throat> but we are not doing the necessary attitudes and perceptions and thoughts that allow us to access that higher guidance and so we say the higher guidance isn't there and we're here on our own trying to make it just like right now they're broadcasting NBC but if you don't have a way to pick it up it's just like NBC television network doesn't exist and if you haven't adjusted your thinking and your consciousness to the point that you can hear the voice for God within you, you would think there is no God, there is no voice for you to turn to. So the reason why it seems like you're on your own is because of what you taught yourself and still are continuing to teach yourself. Now your physical reality and what you perceive physically is a reflection of what you think. Everything that you experience is coming to you based on your thinking and your feelings. Everything that you are experiencing in your life is happening because you are attracting it, seeing it, and manifesting it according to your thoughts, feelings, emotions, and beliefs, both conscious and unconscious. Crap. Okay. <laughs> That's usually the response that I get when somebody actually hears it. That's how I can tell when somebody's heard me. <laughs> okay, and so that means that if you don't believe it, you don't perceive it. And if you don't perceive it, it's because you don't believe it. If you don't see it, you don't perceive it because you don't believe it because your perception just witnesses to what you believe. So you can't say that something doesn't exist because you don't see it and experience it because you're not seeing it and experiencing it because you don't believe it. So there are tons of loving, cool, gorgeous, awesome beings on this planet that you will never see as long as you're looking for the bad and you're looking for what, how somebody's going to screw you or hurt you or deceive mm. you. If you've got a suspicious mind, you're going to see plenty of things to be suspicious about. What you see is a reflection of your thinking. So what the Course in Miracles does is it corrects the erroneous thinking that we have so that the love and the truth that we are can naturally radiate through us and attract the kind of experiences that we all say we want to have. So that means that you can have a new life tomorrow. It just means you have to use the last power you have according to the Course in Miracles. We have one power left and that's the power of decision. Mm -hmm. So we have to use our power of choice in order to have what we want. And we can never make a decision by ourselves. The Course says we never make a decision in isolation. We always make a decision with our advisor. <laughs> and your advisor is, is either going to be love or fear, or it's going to be something that's true or something that's a lie that you're telling yourself. And you will perceive whichever one you side with. The reason why it looks like we perceive more challenges and upset and pain and suffering in the world is because we're much more likely to say, go into agreement with the idea that the world sucks or that something is going to go wrong or that somebody might hurt us much quicker than we go into agreement with the idea of light and joy and peace and love. So since we side with the idea that things could go bad for us quicker than we side with the idea that things could go good for us, then we manifest what appears to be the things that make us unhappy faster than we manifest the things that bring us joy. Because that's what you're siding with the most is what you're seeing the most. What you're siding with the most is what you're seeing the most. If you believe all men are no good, you're going to meet no good men all the time. You're going to feel justified. You can't trust any women. Well, well, if you believe you can't. <laughs> It's not that women are untrustworthy, they just change all the time. <laughs> so to men, it's like, you can't trust a woman, man. That's because they change all the time. You can always believe what a woman says when she says it. Okay. <laughs> so you better jump on it right then. <laughs> not wait till next week. No, it won't work. All right? <laughs> so there's 
not lying going on, there's changing going on. <laughs> okay. That's right. That's the truth. Y'all know it's the truth. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying is no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're experiencing right now, it can change. It can change by a simple decision to start siding with the truth instead of siding with what you've been taught. And how do you know if what you've been taught is something you need to let go of? Is how much happiness are you experiencing right now? That's how you know. So, then the course says, um, basically it's saying, I won't use the way I used to see things as the way to see things now. I won't use the way I used to see things to be the way I see things now. I won't use the way I used to feel, to feel what I feel now. I have to make a conscious decision. Every time I come up here to teach, I have to go, get what you want to receive. Go past your bashfulness, go past your shyness, go past all the things that will stop you from being the love of God in the body, in this moment, expressing out to the people that come to your class. Get out of the way. I have to make a conscious decision to go beyond my fear. And every time I do, I receive more love than I could have ever imagined. When there was a time where I would let my fear stop me and put a little wall around me, because when I was young, I used to be so bashful and shy that I wouldn't stand up to walk into a room. I would crawl around the baseboard. That's how shy I was. Mm. And so even now, every time I teach, I take a breath and remember it's not me. Get out the way. Let love come through you. You know, that's what matters the most. Not what you say, but how loving you are when you're standing up here. Mm. How much are you willing to be a voice for love and give it mm. without any uh, expectation necessarily how everybody's going to receive it. Some people are going to go to sleep, some are going to be bored, some are going to be excited, some are going to be on the edge of their seat, some are going to be wondering what the hell I'm at. And, and so that, so I've got to give what I want to receive and not be concerned about how it's going to be received so I can be free. So I'm giving you what I want to receive because you are me. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So if my reality is going to be a reflection of my energy, then I get an opportunity every time I stand up here to create the kind of world I want to live in by being it myself, whether anybody else in the room does or not. And that's how you know when you're sincere, when you give it. It's not until you give it that you believe you have it. And if you don't give it, you don't believe you have it. So sometimes you got to give it even when you don't think you have it to know you have it to give. <laughs> right? Okay, so you can't be your guide to happiness. <clears throat> You cannot be your guide to happiness. Now remember I said you don't have to believe this. I'm just sharing what the course is. It says you, don't have, you cannot be your guide to happiness. You know why? Because you're the one that made trying to be happy necessary. <laughs> you're the one that's trying to be happy. So obviously you're the one that made trying to be happy necessary. So obviously if you could be your guide to happiness, you wouldn't be trying to be happy. You'd already be happy. So then the course basically says, so the way for you to have happiness has been provided for you because you made it necessary to make you happy. So that which created us gives us everything that we want. So you have a desire to have happiness. So that means that a way for you to have happiness has been provided for you. And I love that. That feels good to me. He says, but you can't make any needs that your creator can't meet. You can't make, any, you can't make a need God can't meet. You can't make a need that the universe can't meet. Why am I not having my needs met in my perception then? Good question. It says because you just have to turn to your creator a little bit because your creator cannot make you turn to it. God cannot make you turn to God because it has to be of your own free will. So therefore, you are keeping your own needs from being met because you don't turn to that which created you even a little bit. So therefore, it looks like your creator isn't there. Mm. It's not the same as just when your car goes off a cliff, yell and help me God. <laughs> okay, so I'm not talking about that last minute because I'm desperate, things are horrible, so I turn to God, which is the way most people do it, right? It's, it's when things get worse, horrible as they can get, they end go, God help me, God help me. It's like a muscle. You develop it and you allow it to grow over time by exercising, always asking, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? Who do you want me to say it to? What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? Who do you want me to say it to? You ask your higher self, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? Who do you want me to say it to? You start practicing acting as if your greater self does exist. It's where it starts. Most people make up their mind about what they want, and they make up their mind, then they turn to God. First I decide what's going to make me happy, then I ask the universe to do it for me. 
First, I decide who I'm supposed to be with. Then I ask the Creator to arrange that. I don't. That might be the worst person in the world for me to be with. But I decided it should be you. So regardless of how you feel about it, we don't have to work that out. <laughs> you know, I looked around the room. I see somebody that reminds me of my past, and I want to go out with them. Okay. <laughs> You know that's why you're attracted to them, right? It's because they remind you of your past. It's something about them that reminds you of your past. And what they're doing is presenting you with an opportunity for your pattern to come up so it can be healed. So anytime you get in a relationship with anybody, just expect that your patterns are going to come up and they're coming up so you can be healed and so they can be healed. So don't think you're going to get in a relationship with anybody and your stuff isn't going to come up from time to time. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. If you're lucky, it'll be all the time. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Don't believe you're going to get in an intimate, special relationship with anyone and you're not going to have your stuff come up to be healed. That's a, it, that's a very immature, childish attitude to approach relationships. Nobody's going to make you happy. There is no one that's going to make you happy. The relationship can be a way to make happy, but you can't make anybody happy. Stop trying to make anybody happy. You can't do it. Save yourself the trouble. It's impossible. Happiness comes from within. It doesn't come from outside of any of us. You can be one whole person joining with another whole person, and you all are sharing your wholeness together. Or you can be two people who want to know your wholeness that have decided to join together to help each other get past the blocks to knowing your wholeness, and then use the relationship as an opportunity to come to the awareness of how cool you are from the inside, but ain't nobody gonna make you happy. So as somebody said, you complete me, you need to run. <laughs> you really, I'm telling you. That's what I love about the Course of Miracles. Just, I, let me just tell you a few facts. And the, and the fact is that the ones you assign a role to somebody for what they should do to make you happy, just know they're not gonna always do it. Mm -hmm. If you know they won't always do it because nobody's on this planet to obey all your rules for happiness, then when they don't do it, you won't be so upset and you'll be able to forgive them faster. Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. Now, even though you're hearing this, and I know you're gonna go right out and expect somebody to make you happy this yeah. afternoon, but that's all right. I know you're gonna do it, even though you heard it, you're gonna be looking for somebody to make you happy this evening. Okay? But they probably, they, even if they appear to do it, they won't be able to do it all the time. Okay, because you're making up a rule for your happiness, and since it's not a law of God, it's just a rule you made up, they're going to break it, because the only thing we can't break are universal laws. You can't break a universal law. What's a universal law? All that I give is given to myself. What's a universal law? A universal law is I give everything. I, I see all the meaning it has for me, that the meaning is coming from me. Everybody's obeying that law, whether they realize it or not. You know, so there are certain laws that everybody's obeying, but your preferences are just rules you're making up, and no one's going to obey those all the time. <clears throat> How do you know it's a rule you're making up? You have to tell them before they know it exists. <laughs> so anything you gotta tell me before I know it exists, you're making this up. <laughs> you know, how much I love you does not depend on whether or not I give you candy on Valentine's Day. That's a rule you made up. You know, uh, I was in a relationship that we we decided we didn't like to deal with all the Christmas stuff, all the traffic and the shopping and the insanity of it, how everybody's acting. We so said, okay, we just we'll celebrate on March third. <laughs> so we just made up a day that was convenient to us that we would celebrate our appreciation of each other. Why? Because Christmas is made up. Christmas Valentine's Day is made up. Everything that's made up is something you can make a decision and change and do it any way you want to. No one has to tell me when I can celebrate someone I love. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do it because everybody, I don't have to change the way I dress because somebody else says I should be dressed in another way. That's all made up. So, so many people are driving themselves crazy trying to do made up rules. It's, it's amazing. So when you free yourself, you realize you're the one that gives everything all the meaning that it has for you, so you can be the one that decides what makes you happy and what doesn't. And then if you're really smart, you ask the part of you that's called God, the divine self, what is it you should allow to have your happiness? Mm. Mm, 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 mm. So, <laughs> now let's, get back to, let's get back to this episode. 
Okay. So, it says, you can't make any needs that God won't meet. But you just have to turn to your creator a little bit. But your creator cannot make you turn to it. Your creator cannot make you turn to it and remain your creator. So your creator cannot make you turn to your creator and remain your creator. Your creator can make you return to your creator and remain your creator. Your creator must remain aware of the creator in order for you to remain aware of the creator. Your creator must remain aware of you for you to remain aware of you. And your creator must remain aware of you for you to remain aware of your creator so the fact that you are aware of God means that God is aware of you <laughs> okay I'll say it again all right the fact that you are aware of your creator means your creator is aware of you and your creator is also aware of itself so your creator cannot change itself. So your creator cannot change itself. God cannot change you. Nothing can change you. Because you are love. And that is an eternal fact that never changes. Mm -hmm. So who you really are is love. But you don't realize you're only love. Mm -hmm. So you think you can change. The truth is you can't change. So you've been right all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I can never change. You're right. You can never change. But everything that's not you can change. The part of you that's afraid, that ain't you. It can change. The part of you that think you're broke, that's not the real you. It can change. The part of you that thinks you're lonely, that's not you. It can change. Anything that is not you can change. What is you can never change. And you are love. And you are powerful. And you are free. And you are unlimited forever. That can never change. That's good news. <laughs> I just want a Mercedes. <laughs> Two, if you talk about something I want, then I'll be happy. <laughs> But I'm just a messenger. I'm just going to deliver the message, right? When was the last time the postman came to the door and gave you a letter and stayed, stood there to wait for you to read it to see how you felt about him for delivering it to you? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, I'm giving you a message, okay? But the, a God's messenger, a messenger of God has one difference from a regular messenger. They have to accept the message for themselves mm. first before they deliver it. Mm. So everything I'm sharing with you, my first and foremost desire is for me to accept it for myself. Mm. Mm. So when it says nothing can change you, and what I'm doing, is I'm just, I went through every paragraph and I'm just sharing with you in plain language the points that it's making. And then it says nothing can change you. The only thing that can change about you is what's not you. The correct perception sees you as you always are. True perception sees you as you really are. So when you're seeing correctly, you won't even see what used to upset you. You won't see anything to upset you when you're seeing correctly because you'll only be happy when you're seeing correctly. And if you can only be happy if you don't feel guilty and if you don't feel less than whole and beautiful. And so if you're happy, truly happy, you must be seeing yourself as innocent whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. So a happy person is an innocent person who's not seeing themselves as sinful and guilty and bad. Mm. So when I first landed on the planet and went into my uh, fundamentalist Baptist church that I was brought up in, the first thing that they told me when I landed in the church was, you're a sinner. God's son died because of you. I said, well, that was 2,000 years before I was born. What did I do? <laughs> and they told me, don't question. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It didn't make any sense, but you were told, don't even question it, right? So when you come here and you're told you're inherently flawed, not only are you guilty, it's not like you, you accidentally killed your neighbor's puppy dog, you killed the son of God. <laughs> That's a hell of a lot of guilt to drop on a kid, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so think about that, and then you are a being that creates through your thoughts, and your reality is a reflection of your thought, which we're not taught because we're spiritual beings that create, we're consciousness. Then you get a, a, a belief at a very young age that you are flawed in some way, 
That core belief starts to create your childhood, being a teenager, being a young adult. So you start creating things that validate you are flawed and not okay. And so you wonder why as a child you created so many things that made you unhappy. It was rooted in the idea that you're separate from God, separate from love, and separate from innocence. And that you're guilty. You were born guilty. So if people knew the power of thought, they would sure be teaching their children something different. Mm -hmm. But that child chose those parents, and those parents told that, told that child, because whatever those parents were going to present that child with is exactly what that child's soul needed to evolve. And whatever that child presents those parents with is what that parent needs to evolve. Because before we come here, we decide on what we're going to learn in earth school. <laughs> I went to the black body store. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went by the white body store. <laughs> then I said, well, I think I want to dance a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a sale. <laughs> and even to the day, you can buy my body real cheap. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and after my last birthday, it's on, I'm on the return track to take it back to the store. <laughs> so you are not your body. You are free. You are an unlimited being, and you are inhabiting the physical body because that's the spacesuit we wear in the physical plane. You are more than your body. You are not a victim. You are unlimited. But nobody tells us that. So if you told your limited body, you believe your limited body, you act like your limited body, you be around other people who believe they're a limited body, and you reinforce the lie of being separate. You know it's not true. You know what we've been taught must not be true. And the way you know that what we've been taught must not be true is there's too much fear in the world. And you have too much fear. Nothing that we believe could be based on the truth with so much fear and separation in our perception. Think about it. You know, why would we, how could we possibly be dealing with what's true with as much fear and separation as we see around us? Truth is loving. It's not frightening. You know. So my definition of love is unlimited communication without fear. How do I know if I'm really experiencing love in a relationship that I'm in with somebody? How afraid am I to communicate my thoughts, my feelings, and my emotions? If I got a lot of private thoughts, I don't love you yet. If I have a lot of secrets I'm keeping from you, things I'm not sharing with you, I don't love you yet. I got some blocks to you. Are you with me? Yes. Now, you got quiet because they mentioned that love had the people you knew. I know that. I know, I know all of a sudden. <laughs> like, Damn, I don't love nobody. That's okay. <laughs> because it's usually the people who are most special to you that you have the greatest secrets with. Think about it. Because they're the ones you're most afraid to lose. That's why you tell your best friend something you'll never tell your love or mate. So who's really the one you're most intimate with? Mm. You know, the love is always the last one to know. The special one is always, all your friends, all their friends knew before they went, I knew she was going to leave you. <laughs> <laughs> I know she didn't really want to be with you no more. She called me and told me. <laughs> You were the last one to know. Why? Because you were the one that were most special. You were the one that they were most afraid to lose. You pay a price for that. Mm -hmm. So if you want to encourage someone to not have private thoughts with you, you can't attack them for sharing their private thoughts with you. So if someone is telling you something that they're afraid to say, but they really want to say it because they want to have a real relationship with you, then you go off as soon as they do it. Don't be expecting them to keep on telling you the truth about what's going on within them. Mm -hmm. Because nobody wants to be attacked all the time. Even in the name of being honest. Mm -hmm. So even if they're saying something that's just making your skin crawl, you try to breathe through it. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Take a breath. Come back. Okay. Keep on. I need to hear this. Because if you don't attack, they feel safe to share. And the safer they feel to share, the less private thoughts they'll have and the less secrets will be between you and your friends or your partners. 
But you cannot expect anyone to be honest with you that you're attacking for sharing with you. It's the most ridiculous thing I see people do. Mm. Tell me the truth, tell me the truth. Don't be lying to me, tell me the truth. <laughs> then you tell them the truth, and then they want to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> then you wonder, why they're not rushing to tell you the truth? <laughs> Give what you want to receive. Give what you want to receive, right? So the Course in Miracles then goes on to say, mm, mm, mm. this is such cool stuff. <clears throat> it's impossible for you to establish your innocence because you're the one that established your guilt. Wow. It's impossible for, you, for me to establish my innocence. It's impossible for me to make my innocence real on my own. You can't make your innocence real on your own. You limit the guidance of the Holy Spirit, which is your higher self, when you try, oh, I love this. You limit the guidance of the Holy Spirit when you try to handle anything by yourself. You limit the help of God whenever you try to do anything by yourself. Wow. Wow. It says right up, it show you I'm not making this up. Here it is right here in the paragraph, paragraph eight. It says, it's only because you think you can run some little part and deal with certain aspects of your life alone that the guidance of God or Holy Spirit is limited. So since you're trying to deal and handle certain aspects of your life alone, that makes the guidance of the Creator seem limited. So you make the Creator undependable, and you use this fancied undependability as an excuse for keeping certain dark lessons from the Creator. And by limiting the guidance you would accept, you are unable to depend on miracles to answer all your problems for you. Now what in the heck did that just say? It says to you that, I love this, I'll say it again. Whenever you try to deal with anything alone, you block the guidance of God. You limit the help of the Creator whenever you try to do anything by yourself. You limit the help of the universe whenever you try to do anything by yourself. You limit the guidance as long as you try to handle anything by yourself. You block your guidance whenever you try to do things without God. You will see your Creator as undependable to you whenever you're not listening to it. So the reason why it looks like God is sometimes there for you, the universe is sometimes there for you, and sometimes not, is because you sometimes turn to God for help and sometimes don't. And every time you try to handle anything on your own, you're limiting the guidance you can receive because the idea that you can run something on your own blocks the guidance of God, according to the Course. And so then you turn around and say, God is undependable. Spirit is undependable. I can't depend on God. That's because you block the guidance every time you try to handle something on your own without ever turning to your higher self for any help or guidance. And that explains exactly why it looked like I had to handle so much stuff on my own. So I want you to hear that one more time. Mm -hmm. You're going to say there's no such thing as God and spirit that's there to help you in situations that you're in in any situation that you're in that you're the one that's trying to handle it on your own. Mm -hmm. So every time you try to handle anything on your own, it's going to look like you're having to handle it on your own. Anytime you try to handle anything on your own, it's going to look like you're having to do it all on your own. And it'll look like you don't have the assistance of the universe or spirit to support you or help you. So what are the areas of your life that you're trying to handle on your own? It's every area of your life that you think you have problems that are unsolvable and have not been solved. Wherever you see in your life that you see a pattern that's never changed, that's the, pa that's the area you're still completely trying to handle on your own. That's how you can locate it really quick. It's wherever you are suffering right now, wherever you think you have a problem right now, wherever you think something isn't going the way that would bring you the joy that you want right now, the Course in Miracles is saying that's the area you're in charge of. <laughs> that's where you're not allowing the universe in. That's where you're not allowing spirit in. So one of the things about the Course in Miracles that which was a trip for me when I first started reading it was it got me out of denial. I didn't like that because most people are only happy because they're in denial. <laughs> it's because they're denying what they're doing to themselves or they're denying the truth or they're trying to fool themselves that most people even have any happiness at all because they're not telling themselves the truth about what's going on. So if I wanted to get out of denial about why my problems are being solved, instead of blaming you and saying you're the reason why my problems aren't being solved, I can tell myself the truth and say what is happening actually is I'm still trying to handle everything on my own without getting in touch with my divine self. That's why your problem is still there, Earl. Because these classes are first and foremost for Earl. 
You're just watching me wake up. Mm. Okay. <laughs> That's really special, isn't it? <laughs> Think about that. I mean, y'all get a chance to and people come just to watch you wake up. <laughs> Thank you. That's so loving of you. We're here to support you. I know you've already made it, and y'all just coming to help the little poor black dude. <laughs> y'all so nice. <laughs> So beautiful, because you all got it all together, right? Y'all love everybody, take 100% responsibility. Don't have no financial lag, relationships are just magnificent. You love your career, your body looks so good, you get in front of the mirror and orgasm looking at yourself. <laughs> After this this morning, I walk past the mirror and goes, <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> People who believe in sin are appalled. <laughs> they can always tell we got body guilt. <laughs> Most of the time I look back at my classes and go, I know I didn't say that. I know I didn't do that. So I video all my classes, I put them on my website and I put them on YouTube. And if you go there and you sign up for my contact list once a week, I send links to the classes so you get a chance to remember that you were here. <laughs> so because you have to hear it over and over again in order to impact your consciousness, that's why I do it, so you can listen over and over again. I got over 800 videos on YouTube. Um, so, you block your guidance, I said again, you block your guidance whenever you try to do things without God. You will see your creator is undependable to you whenever you're not listening to it. Whenever you try to do things on your own, you make God seem undependable to you. You do not think that God is dependable, and so you keep certain problems and situations to handle by yourself. See, I don't think my creator is dependable, so I'm trying to have, handle everything myself. He says, because you don't believe you can depend on your creator, so you try to handle everything. Most, I don't even know if there is a creator. I don't even believe in a creator. I have my serious doubts about God being real. So this is answering why. The reason why God doesn't seem real to you is because you're trying to handle everything on your own. And as long as you keep doing that, there will be no evidence of God to you. Because you're blocking all the guidance that can solve your problems. Whew. It's funny, when I talk to Course in Miracles in the Deep South, which is, sees itself as evangelical and very religious, if I didn't mention Christ, God, and stuff like that from the Course, they wouldn't want to listen to me. That's what would make them listen to the Course, because we use Christian terminology. Up here, it's just the opposite. You mention God, and that's when everybody gets suspicious. <laughs> it's just the opposite in many cases. It's really interesting to watch. It's like, uh, I know it's a class on spirituality, but don't you mention spirit. <laughs> it's wild. It's wild. Whatever you do, don't mention that I, I created myself. What are you talking about? You didn't create yourself. You did not create yourself. So you can't judge yourself because you didn't make yourself. Mm. You can't judge yourself image because you're making that up. But you can't judge yourself because you didn't create yourself. I can judge the cake I bake. The cake can't judge itself because it didn't make itself. Mm. So you can't judge you. You can just judge the way you see in you. Uh. And the way you're seeing you is determining how you're treating you. So you best start seeing yourself correctly. <sighs> so you can start loving your image of yourself, which will not block your real self. Because now your image of yourself is that you are loving, is in alignment with your true self, which is love. So you're, first you go to wrong perception, which is a perception of fear, to right perception, which is a perception of love. And then from right perception, you get in alignment with reality of who you really are, and you come into the awareness of who you truly are. That's the way it works. I go from a fearful way of seeing things to a loving way of seeing things to the way things are. So the more afraid you are, the more incorrect your perception of everything is. The more angry, upset, and guilty and unworthy you feel, the more your perception of everything about yourself and your life is totally incorrect. But you will see a reflection of that perception of yourself coming back to you from the people around you treating you the way you think about yourself. So you think it's true, even though it's not. 
So if you're unhappy right now, you're lying to yourself right mm. now. And that's good news. Mm. If you're miserable, hope you are wrong. <clears throat> Don't want to be right and miserable. <laughs> but most miserable people want to be right mm -hmm. about it. That's what's so funny. People who feel most justified when they're most upset when actually you don't want what you're upset about to be the ultimate truth. I know it's common sense makes us dizzy, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we are sane beings who learned totally yeah. insane things. Yeah. And so now we think we're crazy. Oh. Instead of realizing we learned a crazy way of looking at things yeah. when we came here because we came here so that we could change the way we see things. Because you just see in your own mind. You're walking around in your own mind. This is your mind. You are Donald Trump. That's what you put now. I, I, I was batting it down for that way too far. It's like, oh no. All right. I was liking you in first black man. Now you just stepped over the line. I'm gonna build a wall around the church. Okay. <laughs> you know. So I'm gonna finish this paragraph while I still have my life. <laughs> I went too far, I could tell them. <laughs> So are you clear now why it seems like you're not hearing the guidance of God? Yeah. Okay. And, and honestly, are you not trying to run certain aspects of your life on your own? And don't you sometimes see it as if the creator is not dependable, that you can't always depend on the truth? It, it says, so, it says, you don't think that your creator is dependable, and so you keep certain problems and situations to handle by yourself because you don't believe that you can depend on your creator. Your creator, this is what you do. And this is what you tell yourself whenever you are afraid or upset. You are unable to depend on God to answer all your problems for you because you put a limit on the amount of guidance you will accept. Mm -hmm. How do you know when you put the limit on the amount of guidance you will accept? It's when you're doing things on your own without yeah. asking for guidance. Yeah. Okay, that got me out of denial. Then it goes on to say, um, you are unable to depend on God to answer all your problems for you because you put a limit on the amount of guidance you will accept from your creator because you believe that your creator is undependable and so you try to run certain aspects of your life and you try to stop your problems on your own but every time you try to run your life on your own and solve problems on your own you actually block the guidance that the universe wants to give you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God is not going to give you what God... God is not going to not give you what God wants you to give to others. Your creator is not going to not give you what your creator is telling you to give to everybody else. The, the, the creator is saying to us, love your brothers, love your sisters, be generous, be open. So you think your creator would tell you to give some love that's not being given to you? Is asking you to give compassion that you aren't receiving from your creator? See, since we come from that thing of do as I say, but not as I do, we unconsciously think our creator has that attitude. I want you to give love and compassion and forgiveness, but I'm not giving you love and compassion and forgiveness, Earl, so whatever you've done in the past, as your creator, I'm going to punish you and condemn you for that, but I want you to be loving to everybody else. No, the Course in Miracles are saying is, it doesn't work that way. Whatever the creator is asking you to give, abundance and love and peace, that's what you're going to receive yourself because it has to be extended through you. So true perceptions are for you. Love is for you. And we're together so that we can remove the blocks to receiving it. Thank you for listening to this much today, y'all. Whoa, you're innocent. You're innocent. You're innocent. You're innocent. So we're going to do the, I'm a full-time teacher, and so I like to eat, and so we're going to do the uh, financial expression of appreciation. <laughs> God is the source, but thank you for being willing to be a channel. Thank you for sharing with me.
I really appreciate you. Those online who also see value in what I do and you would like to share a financial expression of appreciation, would you go to my website, earlpurdy.com, and you can also make a financial expression of appreciation. I also do one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions. Um, let me share with you. If you have a problem or a situation or circumstance that you want another way of looking at it and you're tired of being blocked, then I work with you on a one-on-one -on -one level and I bring all of these teachings to the situation that you're going through to give you another way of looking at it and to heal it. For those who are open-minded enough to take advantage of another way of receiving information, then I, I'm also an astrologer and a numerologist, which is another way of just receiving information to share. So if you're open to it, then I bring that into the session also. Because again, we were not just dropped here without guidance or other ways to look at things. So if you might be interested in that, go to my website. It explains what I do in detail. And if you're uh, anywhere else, I also do Skype and do phones on the phone also. So these are, so if you're going into the next year and you're really ready to do it differently, then I'm available to help you to see it differently and to do it differently. So Tuesday night, Tuesday night, I do a class called The Way of Mastery. That's fine. Thank you, brother. And it's also another powerful class about removing the blocks and getting in touch with your ability to create your reality the way that you would like it to be. It's a very deep class. So that's 7 o'clock on Tuesdays. I want to invite you to come check it out if you haven't. We have a great, <coughs> powerful class. So it is a complete blessing for me to be in your presence. I'm so grateful to see you and to be in your presence. We're getting ready to go into a brand new year. And I want you to have absolutely allow, allow mm -hmm. yourself to have the best year you've ever had mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. And everything that comes up in the new year, ask yourself two questions about everything that you try to do. Mm. Two questions. What is the purpose? What is it for? I'm getting ready to ask this person out. What's my purpose? Mm -hmm. What am I asking them out for? <laughs> I'm getting ready to try to change my job. What is the purpose? What are you doing it for? Because the purpose and the goal determines the outcome. The goal determines the outcome. So if you want to be a person that's no longer a person that things just seem to happen to you. You know those people that something's always just happened to you. They're just a the nice person in the world, then a truck fall on their head. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know those people. Okay, it's because they don't have any goals. They don't have any clear vision of what should happen, so things just happen. So start to have a vision. I want the peace of God. I want the peace of love. I've learned over the years that it's not the form that matters, whether it's a car, a house, or a relationship, whatever, a body, whatever. What matters is the content of it. And everything is neutral. And I'm either going to use it for love or I'm going to use it for fear. I'm going to use it for joy or I'm going to use it for pain, no matter what I ask for physically. So get clear that what you really want is love, what you really want is peace, what you really want is freedom, what you really want is happiness. And then the thing that you are physically asking for is the thing that you think is going to bring it to you. But what you want to start doing is cut out the middle thing and just go straight to asking for your happiness. And then let the happiness create the form that it comes in. Reverse it. You know, I want a loving relationship, and then I let that desire for love create the person that allows that relationship to happen with me. I don't pick the person out first and try to force the love through them. <laughs> See, that's the way we do it, you know what I'm saying? So start going for content more than form. Start going for the content more than the form, which means the mind more than the body. So if you want a little test, if you want a little test to see if the person you're with, you just with them for their body. Okay. I told you about that black body. I can't help you. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to boogie. <laughs> So what you do is, you, you ask yourself, 
if this person didn't have a body, would I want to hang out with this man all the time? And you'll see really quick why you're with them. You had to take that body away and listen to their conversation all the time. Would you shoot yourself? <laughs> then you kind of get some idea of whether or not it's about the body. <laughs> yeah. If I was on a desert island with this person for three years, would I drown them? <laughs> Be a little hint. So, I'm going to finish in a couple of minutes. Do a little quick little review of what we covered so far. Are you willing? Yes. 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 Oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> If you'd like to have a link to the classes, I got a mailing list, a contact list up here, or you can go to my website. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna say this one more time. Whenever you try to do things on your own, whenever you try to do things on your own, you make God undependable. When you try to do things on your own, Limit the help of God whenever you try to do anything by yourself. Whenever you try to deal with anything alone, you block the guidance from God. Problems to yourself to handle. 